Some of the most innovative thinking about philanthropy is being done on the West Coast and in the technology industry. And some of the signatories of the Giving Pledge come from that industry. Jeff Skoll was the first employee at eBay. I spoke to him as part of our series of interviews with philanthropists. So maybe in our parents' generation, doing philanthropy might have been putting a new wing on the hospital, which is great, uh, or having a new uh, uh, education board or school in the neighborhood, which, which was great. Um, and that, was, that, that served a time when we were much more local now. The changes upon us are, are exponential, and it, you know, it's also a, a big advantage to take opportunities to solve global problems, uh, solve interconnected problems. And if, if we can do that, then you know, we can go back to, uh, I don't know, back, back to saving the arts. So when you're setting out on your philanthropic journey, when there's so many causes that you could pick from, what and how do you choose? When I was growing up, I, you know, middle class family, never had any uh, expectations of great wealth, but I read a lot of books and it seemed to me that the world of the future might not be as pleasant a place with overpopulation, competition for resources, terrible new diseases and wars. And I wanted to be a writer uh, to get people involved in these big issues that would affect us all. And I didn't think that would be the best way of making a living, uh, no offense to our journalistic colleagues. Uh, so I became an entrepreneur first, uh, started a few businesses, then eBay. And it was at that moment I realized I had uh, far more resources than I could ever um, uh, do uh, with, uh, you know, there's only so much you need for your life and your family and uh, your community. And I resolved to try to tackle the biggest issues in the world. Uh, so the, the frame is issues that reflect uh, whether mankind will survive into the next century uh, and better still, uh, will thrive beyond that. And so, so the vision is to live in a sustainable world of peace and prosperity. You obviously have participant media as, uh, as one of your uh, ventures and you've talked a lot about the power of storytelling as a way of leveraging the philanthropy that people are doing, right? Indeed. And, you know, if, if you take these most important, part of, uh, most important issues in the world and you tell a story of them, Let, let's take um, well, girls' education. Yeah. Are you going to go see a movie about girls' education? Well, Probably not on its face. And you get so many philanthropists or well-meaning folks or NGOs that come and say, hey, I want to do a movie about girls' education. And sometimes we'll go to the well, we'll commission, we'll develop, we'll try to find a story. Um, other times we'll t take a look out and find something that somebody's working on. Uh, but that's a very difficult road to hoe. And when, when these things work, uh, when a story gets to you, uh, it changes your behavior. And when you see a movie or film that makes you cry or touches your heart, that's, uh, that, you know, that, that's what we aim for. But it, it has to be about the story and not the issue. I wonder what you think is your greatest philanthropic mistake along the way, looking back on, uh, on what you've been doing. I think at times uh, philanthropists uh, can go in, think that they've solved a problem, and turn uh, to other things, because uh, that problem is, is now solved. Um, my example uh, was uh, the movie An Inconvenient Truth, which took climate change from being a not discussed matter, not important matter, to getting people up in arms about it. Um, and then figuring, you know, the scientists and the public opinion will take care of it from there. Um, now, over the last five years, the fossil fuel industry fought back, and so now we're sort of pushing back with a different message, you know, it's positive, but uh, lesson one, if you're going to do a campaign about something, uh, be in it for the long haul.